Hello friends, myself Dr. Nandakumar Rawal from College of Engineering Amba Dubai is going to deal with Applied Thermodynamics 1. This is our 30th lecture. In previous lecture, we have discussed about maximum discharge through a nozzle, velocity at maximum discharge, effect of back pressure, and expansion of steam considering friction in a nozzle. <coughs> Today, we are going to discuss about super saturated or metastable flow through nozzle and numericals on steam nozzle. <coughs> now, let us move towards super saturated or metastable flow through nozzle. So, in a nozzle, when steam passes through this nozzle, the expansion process takes place. Due to the expansion, pressure of steam gets reduced. So, say let us consider steam entering into the nozzle at point A at pressure P1. <coughs> that is expanded isentropically from point A to point E to reach the back pressure of condenser or in a turbine, sorry, in a nozzle. So, if steam is expanded from pressure P1 to back pressure Pb between A to B, so it is likely to happen that uh, this is on Molier uh, chart. So, now you can see this as a saturated liquid, uh, saturated steam curve. So, what happens when steam is expanded from point A as soon as the expansion process or pressure of steam falls to pressure P2 at point B, the condensation process of steam has to start at point B. But what happens actually the condensation process uh, which has to start at point B is not going to start at point B, it starts at point B1. So, this expansion between B to B1 is uh, considered as a dry saturated expansion of a dry saturated steam. So, this expansion uh, continues to be dry between B to B1. The reason is that the velocity of steam is very high and time required <coughs> to start phase change process uh, from B to B1 is a very short that is 0 0.001 second. The steam passes through the nozzle at a sonic velocity. Uh, therefore, the time required for initiation of condensation process uh, is very short and the condensation process instead of starting at point B, it starts to condense at point B1. So, this uh, delay or the condensation process is suppressed between point B to B1 and that is known as the metastable flow or the super saturated flow. So, here if we find such points B1, C1 and so on, so these points are joined by a line and actual, so this is theoretical satur uh, dry saturated line and now practical dry saturated line gets shifted and this phenomena was obtained by a scientist known as Wilson. Therefore, name of this dotted line uh, where actually the condensation process starts is known as a Wilson's line. So, this line is known as a Wilson's line and the flow between these two lines is known as a metastable flow or super <coughs> saturated flow. This is known as a metastable flow or super saturated flow. So, here we can consider as uh, A to B or A to B1 is the expansion of steam. A to B1 is the expansion of steam in dry saturated region. And from B1 onwards, the expansion of steam uh, continues with the wet region and the steam becomes wet and condensation process is going to continue up to E. So, this is what we say as a metastable flow and this is because of very high velocity of steam or steam flows at a sonic velocity and time to time available for this steam to pass in this region is a very short about 0 0.001 second. So therefore, we call this as a metastable flow or super saturated flow of steam through the nose. So now, 
coming to the numerical we will solve a numerical on steel passing through a nozzle now let us see this problem the steam expands from three bar to one bar in a nozzle so here it is not given that the steam nozzle is of convergent divergent type or convergent type only so we assume that this is only convergent type so steam enters into the nozzle at three bar and com comes out at one bar so pressure p1 is three bar and pressure p2 is uh, one bar the initial velocity of steam is 90 meters per second so when it enters into the nozzle initial velocity v1 is 90 meters per second which is given and initial temperature of steam so when steam enters into the nozzle the temperature of steam t1 is 150 degrees so that means steam while entering into the nozzle is a superheated steam the nozzle efficiency is 0.95 the nozzle efficiency is given as 0.95 and then what he is asking us to determine the exit velocity of steam. So what is velocity of steam at outlet that is a V2 he is asking. So now on Molier chart if we see initially the pressure curve we can mark here. So this pressure curve of 3 bar and superheated steam curve of 150 degrees Celsius intersect at one point. So steam enters into the nozzle at state 1 and this steam is expanded isentropically if we neglect this friction then steam has to expand from point 0.1 to 2 dash so this is the theoretical uh, enthalpy drop but actually there is a friction uh, which takes place and because of this the enthalpy of steam uh, which has to fall from h1 to h2 dash h2 dash so instead of falling it up to h2 dash so enthalpy falls up to point 2. So enthalpy at the exit is H2. So now uh, nozzle efficiency is defined as the actual enthalpy drop to the theoretical enthalpy drop that we have studied in previous uh, class. So now what he is asking us to find out velocity of steam at exit. So velocity can be obtained by this equation v2 square divided by 2 minus v1 square divided by 2 is equal to h1 minus h2 into 10 to the power of 3. So this is actually in kilojoules. So therefore it has to be multiplied by 10 to the power of 3. Then the enthalpies will be in joules per kg. Now uh, what we know v2 is required. We want to calculate v2. v1 is given in the problem. In problem itself v1 is given. So now H1 can be obtained because uh, we know uh, pressure, temperature at point 1. So pressure and temperature of steam is known. Therefore, we can find out enthalpy H1. So to find out enthalpy H2, how to find out enthalpy at point 2? So this is the point 2 where we need to find out enthalpy. So the nozzle efficiency is given. So uh, the equation for nozzle efficiency is H1 minus H2 divided by H1 minus H2 dash. So H1 is known, H2 we want to find out and H1 is known, H2 dash can be obtained because we know properties of steel at point 2 dash. So what is known is pressure is known. So quality of steel we can find out, dryness fraction. If uh, the steam is wet we have to find out dryness fraction at point 2 dash. So H2 dash can be obtained uh, by this equation H2 dash is equal to HF2 X2 dash hf g2 dash so this is at pressure p is equal to p2 dash so pressure p2 dash is uh, given as one bar so this is at one bar now uh, to find out dryness fraction at point 2 dash we have to equate entropy ent entropy before uh, expansion is equal to entropy after expansion because this process 1 to 2 is isentropic process. So entropy at point 1 is equal to entropy at point 2 dash. So therefore entropy at point can be 1 can be calculated as entropy of superheated steam. Condition of steam at point 1 is superheated steam. Therefore the equation for calculating entropy at point 1 is SF1 SFG1 plus CPS log 
T sub divided by T S1. So temperature of superheated steam is given. SF1 and SFG1 can be obtained from steam table at pressure of T bar. So this can be calculated. Left hand side can be calculated. So right hand side. So from this right hand side, the pressure P is equal to 1 bar. At pressure 1 bar, SF2, SFG2 can be <coughs> obtained and X2 dash can be calculated. So after getting X2 dash, we can find out H2 dash. After getting H2 dash, we can substitute it here. H1, we can already get it and then H2 we can get. So once we get H2, then we can substitute this value of H2 in this equation. From there, we can find out V2 dash. So now let us move to the team table and from where we will collect certain data. So this uh, entropy SF1, SFG1, then TS1, SF2 dash, SFG2 dash. So this information has to be taken from steam table. So already this data <coughs> is taken from steam table at 3 bar. Saturation temperature is 133.5. HF one is 561 hfg1 is 2163.2 sf is entropy at point 0.1 is uh, 1.672 and sfg1 is 5.319 so at point 2 dash at point 2 dash so pressure is 1 bar at 1 bar pressure temperature of saturation is 99.63 degree celsius hf Two dash is four hundred and seventeen. Then HFG two dash, then SF two dash, then SFG two dash. So this uh, data is taken from steam table. So now let us start to <coughs> simplify. First, we will find out dryness fraction of steam at point two dash x two dash, and then after that we will start to find out enthalpy. <coughs> so to find out x2 dash we must find out entropy at s1 and we must find out entropy at s2 dash so equating these two entropies we can get x2 dash let us start to write this equation so here sf1 plus sf g1 plus cps Natural log T sup one divided by T S one saturation equal to this is at pressure T is equal to three bar or T is equal to three bar. On the right hand side we will write as S F two dash plus x2 dash into sfg2 dash so these values are at pressure p is equal to p2 is equal to 1 bar so let us take these values sf1 at 3 bar <coughs> sf1 at 3 bar is 1.672 1.672 SFG1 SFG1 is 5.319 5.319 plus CPS specific heat of steam at constant pressure is 2.1 natural log temperature of superheated steam is is given as 150 degree Celsius. We want this in degree Kelvin. 150 plus of 273 divided by saturation temperature of steam at pressure P1 is 133.5. 133.5, which is equal to SF2 dash. SF2 dash is 1.303. 1.303 plus x2 dash we don't know that we want to calculate and sfg2 dash sfg2 dash is 6.057 6.057 6.057 so further 
simplification gives us value of x2 dash so this value of x2 dash works out to be 0.98 dryness fraction of steel at the exit of nozzle is 0.98 so now <coughs> we can find out the h2 dash enthalpy at 0.2 dash enthalpy at 0.2 dash h2 dash is equal to hf 2 dash plus hfg 2 dash into x2 dash so hf 2 dash can be taken from steel cable hf 2 dash is 417 417.5 417.5 plus of hf g 2 dash is 2257.9 2257.9 into x2 dash is 0.98 on simplification we get this as 2630 2630.24 kilojoules per cube now once we know h2 dash we can find out enthalpy at point h1 so enthalpy at point h1 is given by hf1 plus hf g1 plus cps p sup minus ps1 <coughs> so hf1 so this is taken at pressure p1 is equal to so HF1 is 561.5 561.5 plus HFG1 HFG1 is 2163.2 2163.2 plus of CPS is 2.1 this we heat of steam at constant pressure is 2.1 into temperature of superheated steam is 150 degrees Celsius and saturation temperature at this pressure is 133.5 133.5 pound simplification h1 value we will get as 2759 2759.3450 kilojoules per kg so once we know h1 h2 dash then we can find out h2 so to find out h2 nozzle efficiency is given by h1 minus h2 <coughs> the actual enthalpy drop divided by theoretical enthalpy drop h1 minus h2 dash so now nozzle efficiency is also given so from this we can write as h1 minus h2 is equal to nozzle efficiency into h1 minus h2 dash or <coughs> we want to find out h2 which is equal to h1 minus nozzle efficiency into h1 minus h2 dash h1 value is known h1 value is known and that is 2759 2759 0.35 minus of actually uh, we want to know h1 minus h2 only because <coughs> the equation to find out velocity v2 square divided by 2 minus v1 square divided by 2 is equal to h1 minus h2 into 10 to the power of 3 so directly we can get h1 minus h2 so h1 minus h2 can be obtained directly find out h1 minus h2 just if we substitute the value of 
no zone efficiency as in this equation h1 minus h2 directly we can get no zone efficiency which is given in this problem is 0.95 no zone efficiency is 0.95 into h1 value which is given as 2759 2759.35 minus h2 dash h2 dash value is 2630 2630.24 so now if we calculate this this value will be <coughs> 122.65 kilo joules per kg so this is nothing but h1 minus h2 now we know h1 minus h2 we want to find out velocity v2 square divided by 2 is equal to h1 minus h2 into 10 to the power of 3 plus of v1 square divided by 2 or this can be written as v2 is equal to square root of if we multiply this 2 with this this will be 2 h1 minus h2 into 10 to the power of 3 plus of 2 into 2 2 in the numerator 2 into denominator gets cancelled so here we will get v1 square now in substituting the values of enthalpy difference 2 into h1 minus h2 is 122.65 into 10 to the power of 3 plus of v1 square v1 velocity at inlet is given in this problem as 90 meters per second it is given here 90 meters per second given is 90 meters per second <coughs> 90 square on further calculation we get v2 is equal to 503.8 meters per second this is the velocity at exit <coughs> so this is how uh, we get the velocity of steel at the exit. Now coming to the next problem. Here the initial condition of steam to a convergent divergent mode. Type of nozzle is given as convergent divergent nozzle is 2.2 mega newton per meter square. So pressure P1 is 2.2 mega newton per meter square and temperature is 260 degrees celsius means steam is superheated steam exit pressure that is p2 at the outlet pressure is 0.4 mega newton per meter square assuming frictionless flow up to the trot so if this is the nozzle if this is inlet at point 0.1 so this is rod and this section is exit 2. So between this section 1 to 2, the flow of steam is frictionless and the friction starts after this rod. So let us say pressure is P1 at inlet, pressure at throat is Pt and pressure at exit is P2. So this is how we can find out. So pressure at exit is P2. <coughs> then what he says, assuming frictionless flow up to throat, up to throat, the efficiency of nozzle is 100%. And after throat, the efficiency is given as 85%. So nozzle efficiency is 85%. That means there is a friction between steam and nozzle from throat to exit. A determined flow rate for a throat area so area of throat is given as 80 area of throat is given as 32.2 centimeters square cross-sectional area of throat of this nozzle is given and also determine exit area he is asking us to find out the area at exit 8 so how to find and what is given in this problem that we will summarize first and then afterwards we will start to solve this so here 
the inlet pressure is 2.2 mega newton per meter square that is nothing but 22 bar because we have to convert this pressure into bar because the steam tables available are based on bar so then the temperature of steam entering into this nozzle is 260 degrees celsius and exit pressure is 0.4 mega newton that 0.4 mega newton is equal to 4 bar the nozzle efficiency between throat to throat to exit is 85 percent and throat area is given as 32.2 centimeters square and one thing we have derived that is ratio of pressure between p2 divided by p1 is equal to 0.54 for superheated steam so here superheated steam enters into the nozzle so this ratio was p2 divided by p1 is equal to 0.4 so here we have written it as pt because we want to find out the pressure at throat so in if this is the nozzle okay, so this is the inlet one this is throat t and this is exit so if we have if we know pressure at point one and pressure at point p the ratio will be 0 0.54 so exit pressure divided by inlet pressure is equal to 0 0.546 this is for superheated steam that already we have studied so what is asked in this problem is he, uh, he is asking us to find out mass flow rate and area of nozzle every exit so now to find out mass flow rate we have uh, the mass balance equation mass balance is nothing but mass of steam entering at inlet is same as mass of steam passing through the throat and same at the exit say for example 1 kg of steam per second enters at inlet so at throat also 1 kg of steam per second has to flow otherwise here there will be accumulation of mass or uh, deficiency of mass so same amount of steam whichever enters at section 1 has to cross the section 2 and it has to come out at the section 2 so same mass has to flow that is the mass flow rate is given by a1 v1 divided by v1 where v1 is velocity of steam and small v1 is specific volume and second uh, mass flow rate at throat is given by at vt divided by vt where vt is velocity at throat and small vt is uh, specific volume of steam at throat. So A2 V2 divided by V2 is nothing but mass flow rate at exit. So all mass flow rates at inlet, throat and exit must be same. So now to find out mass flow rate we can use this AT VT divided by VT correlation because we know area at throat, we don't know area at inlet, we don't know area at outlet therefore we know area at throat we can use correlation m is equal to at vt divided by vt so by using this correlation we can find out mass flow rate of steam so now area of throat is directly given so velocity of throat has to be obtained so velocity of throat can be obtained as uh, square root of 2 h1 minus ht into 10 to the power of 3 so neglecting uh, what we are going to neglect as velocity at inlet v1 is very very small is very small than vt neglecting velocity of steam at inlet so we can write this equation and from this we can find out velocity at throat so what is known so h1 can be obtained the enthalpy of steam at inlet can be obtained because we know the pressure of steam as well as temperature of steam steam is superheated so enthalpy at point one can be calculated so to find out enthalpy at throat the enthalpy at throat can be obtained so here steam is expanded from pressure 22 bar to uh, final pressure is 4 bar so in between a throat comes here so to know this pressure of steam at throat so to find out enthalpy at throat we must know quality of steam as well as pressure of steam at throat so then only it is possible for us to find out enthalpy at throat so to find out pressure at throat pt divided by p1 is equal to 0.54 so by this correlation we can find out pressure at throat and once we know pressure at throat then we can find out dryness fraction of steam at throat and from that we can find out uh, what you say dryness fraction or superheated steam whatever is the quality of steam 
at throat that we can find out if, whether it is uh, wet if it is wet we can find out dryness fraction and if it is superheated then we can find out superheated steam at throat temperature of superheated steam at but one of these two can be obtained and once we know x t and t sub t or t sub t we can find out enthalpy at throat once we know enthalpy at throat we can find out vt then <coughs> small vt is nothing but specific column of steam at throat so specific column of steam at throat can be obtained <coughs> from steam table only so now h1 we can find out enthalpy at inlet because we know in pressure temperature everything by using this hf1 hfg1 p sub 1 minus ps1 so to find out dryness fraction of quality of steam at throat, we have to equate entropy of steam at one and entropy of steam at throat. So here, this is point one and this point is T, so throat. So this is the flow which is isentropic process. Already it is specified in the problem. There is no friction between uh, in the nozzle from point one to throat. So friction starts from throat to the exit. So nozzle efficiency is 100% between 1 to T. <coughs> Therefore, this flow is isentropic flow. We can find out entropy at point 1 that is S1 because everything is known. Pressure is known, temperature of steam is known, S1 can be obtained. So we can find out ST. So ST is nothing but SFT plus of XT, SFGT. So if we get this XT, entropy of steam XT as less than 1, then we say that say 0 0.9, 0 0.98 whatsoever it is. So then we can say that steam is wet at point throat. Or else, if it is uh, greater than one, then we have to find out temperature of superheated steam at throat. So once we know temperature of steam at throat, then we can find out enthalpy of steam at <coughs> throat. Then after that we can find out Vt, specific volume of steam at throat. If it is wet, Xt into Vg. If it is superheated, Vt is equal to uh, Vg into T sup divided by Ts. This formula can be used to find out specific volume at throat. Once we know specific volume at throat, uh, then we can substitute all this uh, specific volume of steam uh, uh, in this equation then we can find out the mass flow rate. Velocity of uh, steam is known uh, here, Vt is known, then small Vt is known, At is known, mass flow rate of steam can be obtained. So velocity of steam at exit can be obtained by using this equation to into uh, neglecting the velocity of steam at inlet. So assuming that this is zero, V2 can be obtained. Once we know V2, then small v2 can be calculated, small v2 and capital V2 is known, mass flow rate is known, area of nozzle at the exit can be determined. So this is the outline of problem. Now let us start to solve this problem. So before uh, solving, uh, we have to collect the information from steam table. So to collect information from steam table, we must know all pressures. So we know pressure P1 at the inlet, pressure at the outlet we know. These two things are known to us. So this pressure is 22 bar and pressure at exit is 4 bar. What is pressure at throat that is not known? So to find out pressure at throat, Pt divided by P1 is equal to 0.54. So here Pt is equal to 0.5. Point five four six point five four point five four six into twenty two bar. So this works out to be approximately twelve bar. So pressure at throat is twelve bar. Once we know pressure at throat, twelve bar. Pressure at inlet is known. Pressure at exit is known. Pressure at throat is known. So properties from steam table are taken here. So these properties are at Inlet means at point 1, these are the properties at point 2, and these are the properties at throat. Throat pressure is 12 bar. So if we multiply 22 
into 0.546 we get 12.012 12.012 which is approximately equal to 12 because uh, we can get the information at 12 bar from skin table so therefore we are approximating it to 12 bar okay so this uh, data is taken from skin table already you know how to see this uh, how to collect this data from skin table now let us start uh, with the solution of this problem <coughs> Now, first of all, we'll find out enthalpy at inlet. The enthalpy of steam. At inlet is H1. So, condition of steam at inlet is superheated steam. So, H1 is equal to HF1 plus HFG1 plus of CPS specific heat of steam into T soup 1 minus T saturation 1 so HF1 from steam table is given as 930.9 930.9 plus of HFG1 HFG1 is 1868.1 1868.1 plus of CPS is 2.1 T soup temperature of superheated steel is given in this problem as 260 degree Celsius 260 degree Celsius minus of TS1 temperature of saturation at this pressure of 22 bar is 217.2 217.2 on calculation we get it as 2888.8 kilojoules per kg now to know this dryness fraction at throat <coughs> so here looking at this at point 1 and at point T so the quality of steam we have to find out at throat so to find out uh, quality of steam at throat we must equate entropy at point 1 is equal to entropy at point throat t entropy at t so here equating entropy at point 1 and entropy at point t s1 is equal to st so this is to find out to find dryness fraction at throat quality of steam at throat let us assume that the steam at throat is a wet first so or else first we will find out s1 let us see s1 is nothing but sf1 plus of sf g1 plus of cps natural law p soup divided by s1 so SF1 is 2.490, 2.490, 290 plus of SFG1 is 3.809, 3.809, 3.809, 3.809, 3.809, 3.809, 3.809, 3.809, 3.809, 3.809, 3.809, 3.809, 3.809, 3.809, 3.809, 3.809, 3.809, 3.809, 3.809, 3.809, 
point two plus of two seventy three. So this works out to be six point four seven four kilojoules per kg kilometer. The entropy at point one is six point four seven four kilojoules. Now let us see uh, actual entropy at throat. So throat pressure is twelve bar. So at twelve bar, what is Sg? Sorry, uh, Sg. Sf plus Sfg is Sg. Sf plus Sfg is equal to Sg. So if it is a dry saturated steam, and if Sg value is uh, less than this S1, then it is assumed that steam is uh, no wet and if this value is greater than Sg then it is nothing but superheated. So at pressure at Pt we will find out Sg value. So Sg we will see if at point 12 bar 2.162 2.162 2 2.162 plus Sfg is 4.303 4.303 so if we calculate this this will be 2.162 plus of 4.303 so this will be 6 point 6.465 kilojoules per kg what this indicates now actual entropy of steam at pressure pt at pressure pt is 6.465 and entropy at point 1 is 6.47 so entropy of dry saturated steam is less than the entropy of steam at point 1 that means steam at throat st or steam at throat Steam at throat is having entropy ST is equal to 6.474. So because we say that entropy at point 1 is equal to entropy at point P. So entropy at throat is 6.474 kilojoules per kg degree Kelvin. So here this entropy is greater than entropy of dry saturated steel. So this is the entropy of dry saturated steel at throat pressure. So Sg at throat pressure Pt is 6.465. This is less and this is more. That indicates steam at throat is superheated steam. So we need not to find out Xt. We have to find out T sup at throat. T sup T we have to find out. So here it is understood. If we try to find out xt, the value of xt will be greater than 1. So that indicates steam is superheated. So if steam is superheated, we have to find out temperature of superheated steam. Now to find out temperature of superheated steam, the entropy at point 1. So let us uh, go on next page. Entropy at point 1 is equal to entropy at point so entropy at point 1 we know entropy at point third so now we know steam is steam is superheated superheated why because uh, the entropy at throat is greater than the entropy at throat sgt sgt means uh, entropy of dry saturated steam actual this is actual entropy actual entropy at throat is greater than the entropy of steam at throat uh, entropy of dry saturated steam at throat so this is 6 point 6 point 474 6 point which is greater than <coughs> which is greater than 6.465 6.465 so therefore steam is superheated so 
assuming that steam as uh, no need not assume it is uh, confirm that steam is superheated therefore yes ft plus of sfgt plus of cps natural log t sup t divided by tst so now s1 value we know s1 is equal to st so this equation is written for st now s1 value which we have calculated is 6.474 6.474 is equal to st plus sgt st plus sgt already we have calculated it as 6.465 so this term together already we have calculated here st sft sgt the entropy of dry saturated steam which we have calculated as 6.465 so 6.465 Four six five plus of net CPS specific heat of steam at constant pressure is two point one into natural log T e sub T T e sub T we have to calculate then temperature of steam at throat saturation temperature at throat which is at twelve bar is one eighty eight point zero so one eighty eight point zero plus of 273 so now we can simplify so these two terms we can transfer on left hand side on transferring these two terms on left hand side we get 6.474 minus 6.465 divided by 2.1 so this works out to be 4.2857 into 10 to the power of minus 3 is equal to natural log P soup at throat divided by <coughs> 188.0 plus 273. So taking antilog on both sides, we get antilog on both sides, we will get 4.2857 okay. Taking an interlock on both sides, we get 1.0127 is equal to P soup P divided by 188 plus 273 400 T1 so T sub T temperature of superheated steam at throat is equal to 461 into 1.0127 466.85 Kelvin or 193.85 degree Celsius. So temperature of superheated steam at throat is known. Now we can find out enthalpy of steam at throat. The enthalpy of steam at throat can be obtained at as HT is equal to HFT plus of HGT plus of cps into t soup t minus t saturation at throat so 
HFT at throat, at throat temperature, HFT is 798. So this is at throat temperature, uh, sorry, throat pressure 12 bar, HFT 798.4. 798.4 plus of HF sorry HGT HFGT HFGT is 1984.3 1984.3 1984.3 HFGT plus of CPS is 2.1 into temperature of super heated steel in degree Celsius is 193.85 193.85 minus of temperature of steel saturation temperature of steam at thought PST PST is 188.0 188.0 so on simplification we get enthalpy at thought is 798.4 plus 1954.3 plus 2.1 into 193.85 minus 188 which is equal to 2794 Point nine eight kilojoules per kg is the enthalpy of steam at throat. So once we know enthalpy of steam at throat, we can find out velocity of steam at throat. Velocity of steam at throat Vt is equal to square root of v into h1 minus ht into 10 to the power of so square root of <coughs> 2 into h1 value is no so h1 already which we have calculated is 2 triple eight point eight two triple eight point eight minus of ht is two seven nine four point ninety eight into ten to the power of three so this can be simplified and velocity at throat can be obtained. So velocity at throat is square root of 2 into 2888.8 minus 7 94.98 into 10 to the power of minus 3 velocity of steam at thought from state. Seven nine four Four hundred thirty three point one seven meters per second. So now velocity at thought is known. So, what is our aim? Aim is to find out mass flow rate. So, mass flow rate of steam is equal to AT VT divided by small VT. So, now this VT is known, area at throat is known, small VT, specific volume of steam at throat. So, specific volume of steam at throat VT is given by 
VGT into P soup at throat divided by saturation temperature at throat. So VGT specific volume of steam at throat, specific volume of dry saturated steam at throat can be obtained from steam table where it is taken here. Okay. So specific volume of steam at throat. Specific column of dry saturated steam at throat pressure is 1.03. So this is 1.03. <coughs> 1.03 into temperature of superheated steam at throat is 466.85 in degree Kelvin. Temperature of steam saturated steam at throat is here 188 plus. 273 means this is 461 461 so here we get a vt specific volume of steam at throat as 466.85 divided by 461 into 1.03 specific volume will be 1.04 meter cube per kg. So now we know Vt, specific volume, we know capital Vt, area at throat is known. So we can find out mass of steam at, mass of steam flow rate. M is equal to area at throat into velocity at throat divided by specific volume at throat. So area is given as 32.2. 32.2 centimeter square so converting it into meter square multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 4 into velocity at throat is calculated as 433.17 433.17 divided by specific column is 1.04 1.04 0.043. So if we end this as 32.2 into 10 to the power of minus 4, divided by 1.04. So this will be mass flow rate equal to 1.57 kg per second, 1.33 kg per second. We see it once again thirty two point into ten to the minus four one point three three seven kg per second mass flow rate is obtained here. So now after this mass flow rate, <coughs> we can find out the properties of steam at point 2 so that the dryness fraction at point 2 can be known. So you can see here, so all this data at point T is known. So we can find out the velocity at exit and from that we can find out area at exit because so m is equal to a2 v2 divided by v2 so this v2 can be obtained by knowing the quality of steam this v2 can be obtained by knowing the enthalpy at point 2 so from that we can find out a2 because m is known mass flow rate is known now a2 will be unknown but to find out this we have to find out the entropy at point 1 is equal to 
entropy at point two dash. So entropy at point one is known. So entropy at point one is equal to entropy at point two dash. So at point two dash, the steam is wet. SF two dash plus SF G two dash into X two dash. S one is already known. Entropy at point one, which we have calculated as six point four seven four. Six point four seven four. So six point four seven four is equal to SF two dash. So at point two dash, the pressure is given. At this pressure, we can find out SF two dash. So that is one point seven seven six. One point Seven seven six plus of SFG two dash. So at point two, SFG is five point one one eight. Five point one one eight. Five point one one eight into X two dash. So we can find out value of X two dash here as six point four. Seven four minus one point one seven six divided by five point one one eight. We get dryness fraction at point two dash as point nine one. So knowing this dryness fraction at point two dash, we can find out enthalpy at point two dash is equal to H F two dash plus H two dash into H F G. Two dash. So enthalpy at point two dash can be obtained. So here you can see in this graph, the steam is expanded from pressure one to hot pressure, and then it is isentropically expanded up to two dash. This is theoretical expansion, but actually it expands from T to two as T two directly indicated. So here, so we are going to find out enthalpy at point two dash. Find out enthalpy at two dash. H F two dash. H F two dash from steam table is taken as six zero four point seven. Six zero four point seven. Six zero four point seven plus of point nine one into H F G two dash. H F G two dash is two one three two point nine. Two one three two point nine. Two one three two point nine. So this, on calculation, we get as six zero four point seven plus point nine one into two one three two point nine two five. Four five point six three nine kilojoules per kg. H two dash is known. So now once we know H two dash, then we can find out the V two or uh, velocity of steam at point two as so right here. Velocity of steam at exit. Exit is V two is equal to square root of two into nozzle efficiency into H one minus H two dash H one minus H two dash, or we can write here as H T. Minus H two dash because friction is between rod to exit. So therefore, H T minus H two dash into ten to the power of T. So we know this nozzle efficiency is given between rod to exit is point eight five two into point eight five into H T is which is calculated here. 
2794.98 minus of h2 dash is 2545.639 into 10 to the power of 3. So velocity at exit can be obtained here as 2 into 0.85 into 2794.98 minus 651 0.06 meters per second. The velocity is 651.06 meters per second velocity at throat. So specific volume at throat Vt is equal to Xt into Vgt. Xt we know. Xt which we have calculated is 0 0.91. 0 0.91 into VGT. VGT is 103.103.103.103. So this will be 0.91 into 0.103. So this will be this figure my thought is 0.09 373 meter cube per kg. So now from this equation mass flow rate m so exit velocity is known this was asked mass flow rate is equal to a2 b2 divided by bt so from this we can write as a2 is equal to m into vt divided by sorry v2 Specific volume at 2. Specific volume at 2 divided by velocity at 2. So here mass flow rate which we have calculated is <coughs> 1.337. into V2. Specific volume at 2 is. So this is V2. It's 2 dash. Vg2 dash. So this is at point 2. The specific volume is point 0 0.093. Point 0 0.09373 divided by velocity at 2 is 651. 651.06. So on simplification we get area at throw, uh, sorry, area at exit as 1.337. 0.09373 divided by 651.06. So this is we are getting as 1.9248 into 10 to the power of minus 4 meters per inch. 0.92 centimeters per meter block. So there we have some wrong calculations because the uh, area of thought is smaller and that is 32.2 centimeters per. Here it is 1.92. So that uh, mistake or correction I will rectify and let you know in the next lecture. So here the it is correct.
So here we committed one mistake and that mistake is here. So this specific volume is wrong. So this is approximately 0.16. So if we take this as 0.16, then the things will change. The mass flow rate, if we change this 0.16, then this mass flow rate will change. And mass flow rate changes, then everything will change. 32.2 into integral of minus 4. Point one six. So mass flow rate is approximately eight point seven one. Eight point seven one kg per second. Eight point seven one kg per second. If eight point seven one kg per second this is then here it will change mass flow rate which we have taken here as 1.337 so this will be 8.71 8.71 into 0 0.09373 by 651 which is 0.1 So something is wrong here that I will rectify and let you know tomorrow. So we stop here. I just uh, there is a correction or a mistake here somewhere. Specific volume again. Specific volume of this is wrong. Exit. So this specific volume is approximately 0.44. So this is 0.44. Eight point seven one into point four four divided by six fifty one and zero six is point forty eight. So area will be eight. Eight. Eight will be eight point zero sorry eight six into ten to the power of minus four. That is nothing but fifty eight point eight six centimeter square. This is in meter square. So this is wrong, this is wrong, this will be wrong, we get here and which is larger than 32.2 cm square, so area at exit is 58, so the only is how to find out this specific volume, 0 0.44, how we get it and previous specific volume where we substituted here as 0.44. 403 how we are going to get it as 0.16 so one thing specific volume at thought which is 0.16 has to be taken therefore this mass flow rate changes to 8.71 and this specific volume which is 0.44 that we will find out how to get this specific volume at Specific column at point two and specific column at what? So these two things, if we know, then we can get this answer as 8.86 centimeter square. So the data which is taken in the book is directly taken from chart. He is saying, but something is wrong there also that will rectify.